We're trying to figure out what to play? Yeah, we just had a Soyuz launch, and yeah, I'm kind of... I shouldn't do that. Um, Starbase. All right, we can go back to Starbase. That's fine. Or we could stage the mission for KSP. Actually, I kind of want to do that. You know what? Let's get down to business. To defeat the Kraken. Uh, let's... Let's uh, go see. Let's take inventory on what we need to do to... Um, uh, to get the to get everything ready to go for case for late hours KSP. That's what I kind of want to do because that that'll be easy to go from that back to Inspiration Four, and then Space News, and then back to KSP, just in case Space News goes long because of that Q and A, which it probably will. So let's 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 play some Kerbal now. Um, early hours KSP. Let's do this. Top off the pad. Yeah, we, we got to do stuff like that. Here, let me get the joystick out. I think it's a joystick. I think it might be a soft J. You're both. Wait, what? You're a soft J. No, you're a soft J. Got him. All right. Do you fly with a joystick? Yeah, of course. Test shot, of course. It's this banger of a song. I've listened to it like 30 times today. I don't care. It's a good song. It's good background music, man. Breakfast for dinner is the best, though. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Bueller, 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 Bueller. All right, we gotta go get ten from its last mission off the pad. We got, dude, we got paid last mission. Not bad. Um, we need to do that synchronous minmus orbit. That'll get us some good contracts there. What else do we have here? This is big. What's that? KDDI Corporation announces that it selected Starlink to deliver high-speed, low-latency broadband internet to KDDI's 1,200 remote mobile towers as its network backhaul provider. Wow. Cool. What was that payload on the Soyuz? One web satellite, Steve. Attach a new part to a satellite on orbit. I have an engineer on the active vessel, I'm not doing that. All right, let's time warp. Let's do our time warps for the day. How's the soy's launch? Everything looked good, Scott. All right, check the contracts again. Uh 
position the sat in a specific orbit around the sun. Oy. Alright, so what I'm going to do is top off the pad with fuel. I'm going to get another fuel train out there. We're going to top off the pad. And, uh... I have to kind of go inspect everything. We cooked the launch clamp last time, so... And then we got to bring the shuttle back over. We got to bring 10 back over to the launch site, so... Sorry, but music sounds loud today against your voice, okay? Sorry, I just like listening to that tune. It's good, good jamming tune. Sweet, sorry for the question. Don't guys, don't worry about asking questions. That's not a problem. Warp. I don't want that. Pad looks okay, but once again, we cooked that damn ground anchor. And then the crane seems to be buckling. See that? Crane's buckling for whatever reason. Gonna have to see if we can fix that up. Pad seems to be doing okay. Crew access arm is kind of bent. I'm not sure how well that's going to work again. I might need to... I'm probably going to switch the crew access arm to a dedicated vehicle that's not part of the pad. Uh, like we originally planned, because that one bends. Does the ground anchor behave? Oh no, I blew it up. It, it got in the way of my engines, and we cooked it at the last launch we don't guys that's what i mean you don't really need the ground anchor out here i have a flat i have a the pad is on a flat piece of terrain i don't need the ground anchor if anything the ground anchor is complication you know let's say the ground anchor is no longer a problem Jax, yeah the, the best part is no part right <laughs> Does it not stop Kraken strikes? Uh, not really. It drifts, Rocket Guy, just like the launch clamps do. It didn't really, didn't really do much in that regard. Salty Kraken says no. No, honestly, it works like when we anchored stuff to the to the launch clamps, and the launch clamps just drifted out of place. The ground anchor just drifted out of place, dude. So, I don't know, man. Uh, I'd rather just have the pad kind of free float and Rocket, the best thing to do is make the parts of the launch pad that touch the ground out of parts that are high impact tolerance. That's the best thing that I can, that I've come up with. Uh, yeah, that's the best one. Crap, Norm McDonald just passed? Really?
Oh. Huh. Well, that sucks. Huh. All right. Look at the news, not Wikipedia. Is this gonna tell us anything that we didn't know? Here, let's go to Deadline. The hell's Deadline? Didn't tell me anything I didn't know. Well, that sucks. Oh well. No, no, the crew mission was two missions ago, 4x3. This was, this launched the satellite out to Minmus. Our, the first Mark VI satellite bus, the resource tracking satellite. Oh, it worked. I use the keyboard for ground vehicles, joystick for, yeah, it, but it depends, Steve, it depends. Sometimes I use the joystick for ground vehicles, depends on the vehicle. Man, you lost to the young boys in Championships League. Man, you, really? All right, it's a little strange. Oh no! Anyways. Not a great football weekend for you? Hey, they lost, man. Look, I ain't trying to take one away from the Dolphins because they played fantastic, but the Patriots made a lot of mistakes, man. We, we beat ourselves, dude. The Dolphins are a good team, all right? And uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take that away from them. Flo, Brian Flores has done a fantastic job down there, uh, bringing that team, bringing that team around. I really, I, re you know what? It's, it's so stupid. And as a Patriots fan, I shouldn't like them, but I like the Dolphins. I really do. They're a good team, good tight knit group of guys, which is what you need to be play good football, right? Patriots, I think, are still finding their way with Mac Jones, but. Dude, that kid played out of his mind yesterday. He really wanted that win, and it really showed. He just made a couple of mistakes here and there. It sucks. A loss is a loss. But, in the immortal words of Led Tasso, be a goldfish, dude. Forget about it. Next game. They'll win the next one. Yeah, we beat ourselves, Merc. Patriots beat the Patriots, man. And don't get me wrong, I ain't trying to take a win from the Miami fans, because, like I said, the Dolphins are a good team, but we made way more mistakes. And you know what? That's our problem. A, a W's a W, man, for them. You know, we made a lot of mistakes, though. 
two two fumbles, two turnovers for touchdowns, man. That's that kills you. That kills you. That's one step forward, two steps back, and we paid for it. But I do like what I see. Mac Jones is very good, man. He's a very good quarterback. I, I haven't really watched him play much because I don't watch college football. Not not out of any principle. I just don't don't have the time. Um, but he's a good quarterback, and I like how he owned the problem in the press in the press conference after. He owned the problem. He goes, look, I'm the leader of this team. If I make mistakes, it reflects poorly on the team. I need to play better. I will play better. I want I want to win. But I you know. I won't, we can't make that many mistakes. We made too many mistakes. He was humble about it. He took ownership of took ownership of the loss and said he'll do better. I can't ask for somebody. I can't ask for more. Kind of feel like my Ravens should be embarrassed after last night. Who won that game? Oh my goodness. Oh, oh, Havocs. Are you taking your pick out, your ship out for a picnic in the green grass? I'm taking it back to its launch complex, Q. Jungo, what's going on? Ravens lost in overtime. Nice plane. It's a space plane, dude. This thing flies into space. Spaceship. Row, row. Here's the thing, though. Baltimore has, like, 13 starters injured. Yeah. Yeah, Audrey, that's true. And the Patriots did bad because our defense, is, uh, defense opted out of COVID. Does that change the result? You know, that's... Uh, wins a win, W's a do uh, loss is a loss. You live and die by the damn sword. With that being said, the Steelers, Steelers had a good game. I can't believe they beat the Bills. I'm pretty damn impressed. Did we wreck the large one? Again, yeah. Yeah, Steve, that sucks, dude. Are you going to fly the plane? When I tow it back to the launch site and we get a mission for it, got to do a couple of things to do that, Chungo. This thing just came back from space, so it has a payload dispenser in it from the last mission. I got to take the payload dispenser out, and we got to put new payload in. Um, pretty much we'll be targeting a launch a little bit later tonight. Right now I'm doing all the background logistics stuff. That's how I play my save. Uh, this thing came back from space. It launched a, it just launched a payload out to Minmus. Um, and I'm, I, it landed on the runway, just like the shuttle. Um, and I'm towing it back to its launch facility. I don't just recover and put it back out on the pad and hit the go button. No, no. I have a reusable pad, a reusable horizontal integration facility, and a reusable space plane. No, I didn't bother fixing it, Roro. There's no point in fixing it. Pad's better free-floating on the terrain anyway. I am 100% sure that this kind of gameplay was never covered in KSP testing, so let's test it out and let's get it right. Yeah, this thing is not just an airplane. It's a it's a spaceship. It's a space shuttle. It flies, but it's a single stage, so no parts come off. I just launch it off the pad. It flies right up into space, deploys the payload, and then comes back down and lands on the runway. It's a vertical takeoff, horizontal landing, single stage to orbit. Sorry for being a noob in the channel. Don't worry about it. Ask questions. How many mods do you have? No, none. I don't use mods. Totally vanilla, dude. With the two DLCs, I have the two DLCs. And Audrey, that's what I mean. I don't want to deprive the, the Dolphins of their win. They're a good team, but we did make a lot of mistakes. But that doesn't matter. A W is a W. Look, foot, guys, if you don't know American football, it's a freaking battle. It's a battlefield. Dude, winning is winning. You know, it doesn't matter. That, that None of that matters, dude, if you don't... I mean, a W is a W is a W. No mods. You mean soccer? No, I no, I mean our football, not your football.
Hello from Spain. Como estas? Bien, gracias por preguntar. No problem. De nada. That's the launcher. Launch complex. Yep. So we got to roll it back up onto its pedestal here and then get it ready for payload integration and then bring out another payload. But I'm doing ground operations, Chungo. Um, it needs gas. Necesito gasolina. Sort of the ISS of space, the International Space Station Twitch chats. Yeah, I got people from all over the world. It's cool. Dame mas gasolina. Si. Ahora. Ahora. <laughs> Rapido. Por favor. <laughs> all right. Am I doing the banter right? Probably explains why they use foot as a measurement. Yes, that is correct. You will promptly give us crap for our measuring system, and then I will promptly say you're being a typical European that's trying to colonize other other territories. Yeah, typical European nonsense. There you go. English mother trucker, do you speak it? Parle anglais? Oui. Okay. Yeah, I know, Havoc's right. Thought we dealt with that whole colonial problem a little while ago. Say what again one more time? I dare you. I double dare you, mother trucker. <laughs> All right, so we need to get the pad back into a safe condition uh, for, for integration. So it's still in a launch configuration. We got to take it out of launch configuration. Um, so... The first thing we'll do is go down here, unlock the launch box. The erector doesn't need to be unlocked, so it, was, it wasn't in the locked state. All right, cool. So now we gotta go down here, disconnect it from the bottom. Now we have to enable the launch box cow controller. It should be set to the full position. Enabled in the reverse, play that. Transporter erector box is set to the zero position. It can we can disable that right now. We don't need it. Master controller should be disabled, set to the zero position. Perfect. Let me get the arrow UI menu up here, which is in the stock game. This is this was added in 1.2. One day I'll learn to use action groups. Ah, it's facile. No problem. The US foot is based on the metric system. There, I said it. Yeah, but we started this whole thing to not be like you. There, I said it. We ain't like you. We're not the same. Get out of here. I'll support the metric system every inch of the way. <laughs> Can you explain cal controllers? What do you want to know?
What's that, Cajun? Yeah, I know, dude. Man, that sucks. So cow controllers are all about application. They do whatever they do what you want them to do. Basically, this is you add stuff to them and you add what you want. So I had target extension here, okay? And what these curves represent is how far the target or what what numbers the target extension is at. For instance, in point one here, when the launch box is in the zeroed position, the hydraulic is at 370. Its extension is 370. And when I play this cal controller, the two telescoping hydraulics, it's as the cal controller goes along, they'll retract and they'll eventually retract to the zeroed position. Moving the hydraulics, contracting the hydraulics over time will cause the launch box to turn into the vertical position. That's all. These are just an these are called animation curves. They this is something they lifted from 3D modeling. Chungo. Hey, uh, welcome to Mission Control. You're going throttle up. Thank you for the sub. I appreciate it. I was about to say it in Spanish. Bien, bienvenido a Control de Misión. No sé. That's it. Four by three. That's simple, dude. Okay, yep. Relax. Oh, we had some nasty pad drift here. Damn. Yeah, this thing didn't like being Kraken struck the other day. Funny inspiration for joke. <laughs> nice. We might need a pad refurb, guys. Then we still have fuel in this. Everything's getting bent out of shape again. Are you going to watch the Inspiration 4 Q&A? Do I have a choice? I'll ask again when you asked that question previously. Or, well, Jonathan, I don't know if you asked it. Somebody else may have. I don't know. Press conference is in like an hour and a half, guys. I mean, it's going to happen during Space News, so might as well. Mazel. Going to be a slow drive back to KSC? Nope. I wasn't on! Yeah, okay, so somebody else must ask. No problem, Jonathan. Yeah, we're going to watch it, dude. What would you say about designing a vehicle that can vertigate itself for allowing a static pad? So add more stuff to the SSTO. Yeah, no, that's too complicated. Yeah, Chungo, that's the whole point. To demonstrate launch operations. Yeah, there you go, Jack. Just thinking about how to eliminate robotic tr Kraken tech is the way to eliminate it, Havix, but that's a little bit more difficult to do than you might think. The only thing is, see, this fuel is fuel that we paid to move out here, which is a little bit on the annoying side. I paid a fuel truck to be out here, but... But we had that nasty Kraken strike with this pad the other day. Yeah, Jack, for sure. I think we could get one more launch out of here. I think we can do one more. I just gotta be careful. Alright, so next thing is to lock that box out. Lock the TE out. Disable the cow controllers for right now.
What's our alignment? 1.6 at 280.6. Risky, is it worth it? It's that Kraken strike that I had the other day, Tessa, where uh, I was trying to pull the crew tank out of this thing and uh, the airlock extended and it, it caught the hydraulics and the docking ports magnetized and it, it bent everything out of shape. So it might pay it it might be better to refurb it. I mean we got time, so we should probably go through and do that. I mean it won't take long to roll this thing out here. It really doesn't. It doesn't take long to do it. How's the crane doing? Let me look at the let me look at the crane. See it bent look at what that Kraken strike did. It totally bent the crane out of shape. Look at that thing. It's buckling in the center. Can refurb done be done through Kerbal construction? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give it a recover after we cooked the launch pad and after that Kraken strike last night. Like replacing certain hinges that drifted. But how are we going to precision place them again? That's the thing. I'm gonna change this to a vertical beam instead of these horizontal ones. And then there's also, we gotta be able to like scoop this thing. There's a bunch of little upgrades that we could make to this thing to get it to not do this stuff. Like for once, for one, like we could fit, fix pad refurbishment but with the crew access arm. Like look at how bent that thing is. It just bends out of shape over time. It'd be better to just put that on a vehicle that we could just drive out here with the crew. You know, so like back the thing up and then like what we originally proposed. That I just did this as a quick thing to be able to get crews operational. It's a cool system, but we can do better. Yeah, that's true. Hello, first time watching. What is this construction for? I don't get it. It's a launch pad, humanist. It's a launch complex, dude. I build my own. Yeah. I play by a rule set where you have to... You don't just build the vehicle. You gotta build the pad for it, too. That's just part of a rule set... A set of rules that I use to make the game a little bit more challenging. I've been playing Kerbal for a really long time, dude. Really long time. So, at this point, dude, I can put, I can, dude, I can put a rocket on the pad and get it anywhere. I could make the rocket go anywhere, any place, no problem. It's really not that big of a deal. So I like, to, I like to challenge myself. So I make the launch pad as well. What you're looking at here is a mobile service building and a launch complex. So see the SSTO over there? That's a single stage to orbit launch vehicle, fully reusable. That thing has already flown two missions. Uh, without being recovered. So like I I launch it off of this thing We land it on the runway and I tow it back over here. I tow it back over here. We roll it up this hill We roll it up the ramp We reattach it right there and then this thing can rotate into the launch position and then we go to launch it, right? Yeah, I'm gonna Let's let's go work on this. Let's go work on the pad. So, humanist, what I'm ha the problem that I'm having is I I don't think parts in Kerbal were ever meant to be used like this. So I'm running into problems where the parts actually wear out. Strange. 
Parts bend and they wear out over time, just like real life. Now, I, I'm not 100% sure that that was intended by the developers, but it does happen. Well, not bad, man, not bad. Thanks, man. Yeah, that's my own launch complex. I built my own launch complex, it's not near the launch pad. The reason why I, I put the small, I have, a, I have two launch vehicles right now. I have the small SSTO and then I have a big SSTO. They're based off of Lockheed's X-33 and Venture Star. I call mine the K-33 and Jeb Star, right? Uh, so here's the big boy. The reason why I put the, the launch complex for the small one out away from the main pad is because I need the main pad to launch this thing. And this thing also, not right now because I'm having problems with it and it's screwing my budget. Uh, this thing can fly by itself, uh, or not fly by itself. Um, but this thing, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Uh, this thing actually has some problems structurally with it. I didn't test the frame well enough. It, it likes to blow up when, you, when it touches the runway just because of how I put the frame of the thing together. We still need to fix this, guys. Correct, Solaire. Mm -hmm. I've been subscribing to this channel for 30 years, and I agree. He's been playing Kerbal for a long time. What's up, Snap? It's wear and tear, Havocs. Yep, the rougher you are on it, i.e. if you don't dock in the right way and you crack and strike, the rougher you are, the worse it's going to get. Yep. This thing flew totally by itself. And this is this thing right here. Um, who was I talking to? Humanist, this, this guy right here is fully reusable as well. At least it's planned to be. I should be able to just land this on the runway, provided it actually does do that. Tow it back to the pad, put a new payload in, and send it again. It's something that I'm kind of prototyping with the smaller SSTOs right now. The small SSTO is, uh, its production name is 5A. This is 5A right here. It's, it's literally the same thing, but just smaller. I use the different making history triangles to make a scale replica of it. Problem is scaling it up had some structural deficiencies. So yeah, I ran into some, ran into some issues, but I, I built these things pretty much in the same way. So like this one is using two five tanks, the other one, the internal fuel tanks right here, they're they are clipping into each other a little bit to replicate the bilobe tanks that the real one has. So the, the fuel tanks are all kind of clipped into each other just slightly, right? Uh, this one is using two five tanks. The big one uses five meter tanks, right? This one uses small landing gear. The other one uses big landing gear. This thing uses fat 455 wings for its for its vertical or for its horizontal stabilizers. The other one uses the big fat 455 wing. It uses this one. It's a, it's just a scaled up thing. The only thing that didn't scale correctly was the structure. Structure did not scale correctly. Uh, and that's the problem that I'm having with the big one. But we're playing in career. So I have to, what right now, my job is to kind of put this thing to work and get it launching on a routine basis without having the pad bend and break. So yeah, that's how I play, dude. I. I really try to raise the bar with, with the Kerbal gameplay. So what happens when the tanks clip into each other? It flies just fine, Q. You can clip tanks. Kerbal will just see it as two objects flying next to each other. But see, I did I did one a little better. My fuel tanks are clipping and I don't want them to be two things flying together. I want them to be one. And I, I want them to also be occluded. My fuel tanks are, are, my fuel tanks are all clipping inside of a fairing and that fairing treats it as one vehicle because all the fuel tanks are technically inside of the fairing. So aerodynamically, the thing works like the real one that the fuel tanks that are inside of this aero shell are all occluded. And the aerodynamics gets transmitted to the back of the stack, which makes a lot of drag because we have a flat back plane, just like the space shuttle, so it doesn't fly very well. That, 
That, uh, that's all there on purpose. Thanks for the explanation. Human I yeah, no problem, dude. One thing I do is I don't, I don't just play the game. I explain what I'm doing to teach people. The whole idea on top of mission mode being a challenge for me is to teach people really the kind of problem solving and the kind of stuff you need to think about to make an end-to-end -end launch architecture. So SpaceX, for instance, didn't just cough up Falcon 9. Like, they didn't just cough it up. It, they, there's a whole bunch of, of equipment here that makes this vehicle work, right? They didn't just do this out of the blue. There's the all the launch infrastructure, all the equipment that they need. Uh, all the that, So that thing is called a launch table, and there's compression bridges that hold the Falcon Heavy in when they want to launch Falcon Heavy. And you have your, your TE, they have airport tugs that move the transporter erector up the up to the up to 39A. See they there's all the other equipment that you, that they use. It's not just Falcon 9, it's the, the HIF, it's the transporter erector, the tugs, the launch table, the crew access arm. You know, the water tower, even though that's not we don't really need a water tower, there's no sound suppression in this game. Yep, yeah, I do an end-to-end -end thing. What I like to tell people is that I, when I play Kerbal, I don't build rockets. I build space programs. Like, see this bracket here? That bracket is what they use to integrate dragons. Well, they probably don't use that one anymore, but... See, there's them putting a dragon together. Oh, hello. This is a picture up close to the pad there. That's Vandenberg. We watched a rocket launch from this pad last night. Discovery, go at throttle up. So yeah, that's how I play, dude. It's not the fastest progression, but I do learn a lot. There's the new brackets that they use for Dragon right there. Hey, Silver Badge from Tiger, six month free sub. Thanks, man. Vacuum testing for Dragon. Huh. Once upon a time, huh? Wow. It's the best part, dude. You know, making the rocket reusable is one thing, Thomas, and that's hard to do. SpaceX has done that. Making the pad reusable, whole nother ball game. There's the iroses. How did we get this picture? For reals. All right, four by three. See you, buddy. Well then. Christmas Raptor. <sighs> Hello, baby. That's nice. That's real nice. Right, right, Snivel? I'm with you on that one. Just, wow. All right, anyway. Hmm. One of the things that I've been thinking about with these SSTOs, guys, is that I never designed any integration points for them. The only integration point, structurally, is right here. Everything else was kind of an afterthought, including this forward docking port right here. It's just... Is it attached to the panels? I think it's attached to the panels. No, it isn't. What is it attached to? Hang on. Oh, I attached it to root. Interesting. Dude, scary. We were listening to this song on the Starlink launch last night. Because SpaceX played it, and it is, it's a banger, dude. Mm. 
We need places to be able to pick this up and manipulate the SSTO because I noticed that a, the biggest problem that I'm having with these SSTOs is that when I go to pick them up and lift them to put them onto the pad, it's bending and breaking parts. These parts are getting bent out of shape, specifically that one. That one's getting very bent out of shape. Oh, okay, Scary, yeah, I got you. Test shot's the best, dude. And it should be clean to it should be clean to um, to stream too, which is pretty cool from what I understand. So yeah, really good. Hmm, how are we gonna do this? You know what? You know what would be better? Instead of on the pad having those air brakes that push up on the vehicle, what if we did this SPMT style? We made a self-propelled modular transporter that fits underneath this thing. All right, that docking port being attached to that panel is probably not good for it, but that is also causing drift down there. So, Thomas, I, I don't mind doing SBMTs for this and making something that fits underneath it. But alignment is key. I have to make sure that we have an SBMT that will align correctly to the vehicle, right? And then we have to make sure that we can align correctly onto the pad. That's what made the air brakes so simple. But the air brakes push on these parts and they bend them because they the vehicle docks when the air brake's pushing on it, so these parts end up bending in. They wear out, especially on the aero shell. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Or we could just find another part to push up on on these things. Discovery, go at throttle up. Hey, Ona Cage, what's up? Here, how about I take this docking port and instead... Here, turn on... Okay, so interstage nodes is on on this thing. How about I take the docking port right here and we attach it to the interstage nodes instead? Right now, we can we can get those problems out of the way, Jordis. But yeah, okay. So that one goes there. And now this won't bend my panels like this. Hey Taylor, what are you working on? I'm just working on some upgrades to this thing.
So this thing, this docking port is now connected to the main fairing right here, which is the front of the vehicle, hierarchically, right? Now what we gotta do, now I'm gonna set it, I'm gonna have a strut that goes to the panel to reinforce it. So now what I'll do is we'll set this back to local, I'll move this into position, and then I'll make this docking, or these struts look like they're docked to the panel. Because, well, they are. And now take that and just move that out of the way so it's down a little bit. There we go. That should reinforce that connection out a little bit. Now, the forward docking port. I noticed that this docking port drifts like crazy. It's really bad. Um, that one is also anchored to the fairing, though. So here, let me move Jet Truck out of the way for a second. This thing moves around. Hey, likes, what's going on? Haven't been on stream since I just did a road trip of my own that clocked in at 2,700 miles over the last two weeks, but I did see your tweet about Route 154. Looks super rad. I'll definitely watch as much of it as I can. Thanks, man. Where'd you go to? Heck yeah, dude. I'm almost debating. I don't know, Robot. I don't have that question. I don't have that answer, but... I'm almost debating instead of making this... Instead of making these wing panels it, it push up on those, how about I have it push up on the fairings and we make the fairings... Give the fairings same vessel interaction. Nah, you didn't miss much, Jim. Uh... You didn't miss much, dude. I'm just making a couple of tweaks. A couple of tweaks to prevent the drifting from happening on the SSTO. The pad had some nasty drifting after I crack and struck it from the Minmus mission the other day. struts in here. Oh, that's my favorite Zeppelin song, Battle. Jeez, that's pretty high praise, man. I'm not sure I'm worthy being called the Jimmy Page of KSP. Jeez. I ain't worthy of that. Any tips about how to avoid Kraken strikes when docking? Can't figure it out. Line, line up, Jordis. Line your docking ports. Don't try to dock. Don't try to force it. Make sure you're directly aligned. It takes time. It takes some patience. Ten years gone. Good song. And then we had the sticky thruster problem, so let's just move those up just a teeny weeny bit. And let's also configure these thrusters. That one's set to yaw. That one's set to yaw, and that one needs to be set to port starboard. This one should be set to pitch and roll. That one needs to be set to pitch, roll, and then it needs to be set to dorsal ventral. This one right here needs to be set to dorsal ventral, pitch, and roll. And then out back, this there's here's where the thrusters really had problems. That one needs to be set to roll on the stinger right here. See, this one needs to be set to yaw. Set that boy to yaw right there. This one needs to be set to roll. That one needs to be set to roll. This one needs to be set to pitch. Pitch, dorsal ventral. This one needs to be set to port starboard. Basically just port starboard. That guy right there needs to be set to pitch, and then dorsal ventral. Is 
So that one right there, show actuation, that should be set to roll. This one right here, that should be set to roll. This guy right here should be set to just yaw. This one right here should be set to port starboard. Oh, it, it moves it over in symmetry. Very nice, cool. All right, RCS is configured. Thanks, pedal. Oh, well, just do it a lot, man. Okay. Now, there is docking port drift. That does happen, and it's very annoying. I'm not sure how we're gonna get around that. That's where I need something to kind of scoop this thing. Struts. All right, so save that. Cruise across southern British Columbia and Alberta, mostly little two-laner highways for... Cool, lights. Neat. All right. I'm not sure what we're going to do about that front docking port drifting, guys. Could you put I-beams on the launch box like a forklift? I could. How would we lift if, if, the for if it's a forklift on the launch box? So this is the front face of the launch box, and we have an L. How do we get the SSTO up and onto that? How do we do that? I gotta go for a bit. I hope I won't fall asleep before the Inspiration 4 interview. If I don't fall asleep, you see me back on. All right, Tiger. Threading the force between the landing gear doesn't solve the up-down problem. I haven't watched it, Puffet, no. Not yet. Notice we're going to need another carrier beam for this.
go. This is Test Shot. It's SpaceX's music that they play during the cast gym. Pretty, pretty vibing, dude. I dig it. It's good working music. All right, take those off. We don't need those. Oh, hello, Pace. How are you? Mmm, do you like? Very nice. Not too long now before the Epic Truck Adventure begins. Yeah, I got about a week and a half. Locks valve's bad. Wait, what? <laughs> What's up, Ray? be a beta tester for KSP2 if they wanted me to Clipstar I would do it Tips on mastering props, robotics, and Kerbal construction. Take your time and make sure you implement exactly what you're trying to make. Simple as that, dude. Like Pilch, this took time, right? You came around right when I was building this. This took time to get it right. But it took time and it took patience. Nothing more. That's all. Like, do I want to go really taking this apart? I just did that. The other thing I suppose we could look into is making the big pad... Pretty much Euler, yeah. That's why people. That's why developers don't mind when I play their games, dude. Because I'll find a, I'll find glitches. I'll find stuff that they never would have found. I heard about it, Boris. I didn't see it. This is the big boy pad.
Hang on. I, I remembered a, something that I needed to fix on the big pad anyway. There's always a hierarchy problem that stems from here, so I'm just remaking how these things were attached to mirror its counterpart right next to it. Double acting pop and locks valves are actually really annoying. It's quite insane how reliable they are on launch, locks, on launch vehicles. A lot of time and a lot of testing, dude. Well, not uh, just for alignment, really. Hmm. I don't know, guys. Do you think we should go for it with the other pad? I'm, I'm not really sure. probably get it to a line. It's alright. I'll take the risk. Yeah, make some cash leading up to the trip. Yeah. Well, when I say go for it, I mean put a rocket on this bent, this thing that's got, that's all bent out of shape. I mean, that Kraken strike with the crane the other day really screwed this thing up, like, badly. Oh, the big pad. Nah, I don't think we have the cash to do it. Anyway, it's 3.30, guys. So, 2,800. All right. Um, yeah. Really wish this wasn't that bent out of shape, but I have to be back for the Inspiration 4 thing, and then we got to start Space News. Did someone say SPAC? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that thing is just straight up bent in this position. That Kraken strike really threw everything out of whack. Nice. Yeah. Okay. What I'm going to do is uh, let's take the crane.
I'll move. Actually, you know what? Just leave that there. The crane has a nasty buckling problem from, from use. It's something that my other launch vehicles didn't have. I'm not sure why it buckles like that, but it definitely does. Strange. Hmm. Disney Plus filmed a documentary during Chris Cassidy's Mission to Space trailer. Oh. Oh, neat. That's cool. It's going to an inclined orbit, drummer, so there's a launch window because you're going to a, you're the Wait, no. I I'd, I'd suspect that they want to get it in the same orbit as the ISS because it's 51.6 degrees at inclined at 590, 590 kilometers. So I I'd expect it as a launch the launch window lines up with the ISS for what I understand. I don't think that's I don't think that's for any particular reason other than for them to like take pictures of it. They're not going to be able to dock to it. They can't dock to the ISS. Yeah, serious maybe. Anyway. Okay. We'll uh Discovery. No one we'll get up. complex three up in a second. Hey phone sister. I mean drummer, I'm not gonna like if they have a camera on board and they point the capsule down and the ISS goes under them, I'm sure they'll take a picture of the ISS with the earth behind it. A picture like you've never seen. It would be pretty cool. Anyway. Guys, I'm going to take... Uh, oh, hey, come back here. I'm going to take uh, 20, 30 minutes here. I'm going to eat some lunch. And then we'll be back for the Inspiration4 interview. How about a new car? A new car, all mine, with 2.99 interest. Okay. Congratulations, man. What kind of car did you buy? Yeah, Thomas... Actually... When Inspiration 4 goes up, that means there will be three Dragon 2s on Orb. There will be three Dragon 2s on Orbit, and all of them will have been reused. 2021 Sentra. I like it better than the Honda, Toyota, and Chevy that you test drove. Why didn't you drive, why didn't you test drive a Ford? Yeah. There will be three dragons on orbit and all of them have been reused. Wow. Will that be the first time there will be three active flights of the same spacecraft type simultaneously? Yeah, actually. Because first sedans and cars are doo-doo.